l- l- listen as closely as you possibly can to this video. Thank you very much. No need to thank me. I I I truly do hope this video helps you because the the Lord he clearly clearly told me to make this video so listen to me if if this video helps you in in any shape form or or fashion no need to thank me all i ask is please please like share subscribe and tell others about it chapter 14 a wise woman builds her house a foolish woman tears hers down with her own hands those who follow the right path fear the lord those who take the wrong path despise him the talk of fools is a rod for their backs but the words of the wise keep them out of trouble an empty stable stays clean but no income comes from an empty stable a truthful witness does not lie a false witness breathes lies a mocker seeks wisdom and never finds it but knowledge comes easily to those with understanding stay away from fools for you won't find knowledge there the wise look ahead to see what is coming but fools deceive themselves fools make fun of guilt but the godly acknowledge it and seek reconciliation each heart knows its own bitterness and no one else can fully share its joy the house of the wicked will perish but the tent of the godly will flourish there is a path before each person that seems right but it ends in death laughter can conceal a heavy heart when the laughter ends the grief remains backsliders get what they deserve good people receive their reward only simpletons believe everything they are told the prudent carefully consider their steps the wise are cautious and avoid danger fools plunge ahead with great confidence those who are short-tempered do foolish things and schemers are hated the simpleton is clothed with folly but the wise person is crowned with knowledge evil people will bow before good people the wicked will bow at the gates of the godly the poor are despised even by their neighbors while the rich have many friends it is sin to despise one's neighbors blessed are those who help the poor if you plot evil you will be lost but if you plan good you will be granted unfailing love and faithfulness Work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Wealth is a crown for the wise. The effort of fools yields only folly. A truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is a traitor. Those who fear the Lord are secure. He will be a place of refuge for their children. Fear of the Lord is a life-giving fountain. It offers escape from the snares of death. A growing population is a king's glory. A dwindling nation is his doom. Those who control their anger have great understanding. Those with a hasty temper will make mistakes. A relaxed attitude lengthens life. Jealousy rots it away. Those who oppress the poor insult their maker, but those who help the poor honor him. The wicked are crushed by their sins, but the godly have a refuge when they die. Wisdom is enshrined in an understanding heart. Wisdom is not found among fools. Godliness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. A king rejoices in servants who know what they are doing. He is angry with those who cause trouble. Chapter 15. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but heart... Now... Listen to me. You heard 
part of Proverbs 15 after Proverbs 14 was finished. It, it says in Proverbs 15, a soft answer turns away wrath. Now, keep, keep that in mind, and also keep in mind, I may post this video several times under more than one title because of everything Proverbs 14 says. But now, listen, listen to Matthew 6 and 7 to learn how to, to pray effectively. Chapter 6. Take care. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired because then you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give a gift to someone in need, don't shout about it as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I assure you, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone, don't tell your left hand what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in secret, and your father, who knows all secrets, will reward you. And now about prayer. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I assure you, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your father secretly. Then your father who knows all secrets will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered only by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, because your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. Pray like this. Our father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. Give us our food for today and forgive us our sins, just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And when you fast, don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do who try... Chapter 7. Stop judging others, and you will not be judged. For others will treat you as you treat them. Whatever measure you use in judging others, it will be used to measure how you are judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, first get rid of the log from your own eye then perhaps you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't give what is holy to unholy people. Don't give pearls to swine. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. Keep on asking, and you will be given what you ask for. Keep on looking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And the door is open to everyone who knocks. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. If you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? Do for others what you would like them to do for you. This is a summary of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. Now, listen to John chapter 8. Chapter 8. 
Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and Pharisees brought a woman they had caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, he said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him, but Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer, so he stood up again and said, All right, stone her. But let those who have never sinned throw the first stones. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they stepped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with a the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to her, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. Jesus said to the people, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't be stumbling through the darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. The Pharisees replied, You are making false claims about yourself. Jesus told them, These claims are valid even though I make them about myself. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you don't know this about me. You judge me with all your human limitations, but I am not judging anyone. And if I did, my judgment would be correct in every respect, because I am not alone. I have with me the Father who sent me. Your own law says that if two people agree about something, their witness is accepted as fact. I am one witness, and my Father who sent me is the other. Where is your Father? They asked. Jesus answered, Since you don't know who I am, you don't know who my Father is. If you knew me, then you would know my father too. Jesus made these statements while he was teaching in the section of the temple known as the treasury, but he was not arrested because his time had not yet come. Later, Jesus said to them again, I am going away. You will search for me and die in your sin. You cannot come where I am going. The Jewish leaders asked, Is he planning to commit suicide? What does he mean, you cannot come where I am going? Then he said to them, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not. That is why I said that you will die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am who I say I am, you will die in your sins. Tell us who you are, they demanded. Jesus replied, I am the one I have always claimed to be. I have much to say about you and much to condemn, but I won't. For I say only what I have heard from the one who sent me, and he is true. But they still didn't understand that he was talking to them about his father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will realize that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own. But I speak what the Father taught me. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not deserted me, for I always do those things that are pleasing to him. Then many who heard him say these things believed in him. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, You are truly my disciples if you keep obeying my teachings. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we are descendants of Abraham, they said. We have never been slaves to anyone on earth. What do you mean, set free? Jesus replied, I assure you that everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you will indeed be free. Yes, I realize that you are descendants of Abraham, and yet some of you are trying to kill me because my message does not find a place in your hearts. I am telling you what I saw when I was with my father, but you are following the advice of your father. Our father is Abraham, they declared. No. Jesus replied, For if you were children of Abraham, you would follow his good example. I told you the truth I heard from God, but you are trying to kill me. Abraham wouldn't do a thing like that. No, you are obeying your real father when you act that way. They replied, We were not born out of wedlock. 
Our true Father is God himself. Jesus told him, If God were your Father, you would love me, because I have come to you from God. I am not here on my own, but he sent me. Why can't you understand what I am saying? It is because you are unable to do so. For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning and has always hated the truth. There is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So when I tell the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Which of you can truthfully accuse me of sin? And since I am telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Now, please listen as, as closely as possible to Hebrews 13. Chapter 13. Continue to love each other with true Christian love. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. Don't forget about those in prison. Suffer with them as though you were there yourself. Share the sorrow of those being mistreated as though you feel their pain in your own bodies. Give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Stay away from the love of money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never forsake you. That is why we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, so I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who first taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and trust the Lord as they do. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your spiritual strength comes from God's special favor, not from ceremonial rules about food, which don't help those who follow them. We have an altar from which the priests in the temple now listen to first john chapters one and four first john chapter one the one who existed from the beginning is the one we have heard and seen we saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands. He is Jesus Christ, the word of life. This one who is life from God was shown to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and announce to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the Father, and then he was shown to us. We are telling you about what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy will be complete. This is the message He has given us to announce to you. God is light and there is no darkness in Him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not living in the truth. But if we are living in the light of God's presence, just as Christ is, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from every sin. If we say we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and refusing to accept the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from every wrong. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. Chapter 2. My dear children. Chapter 4. 
Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. This is the way to find out if they have the Spirit of God. If a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ became a human being, that person has the Spirit of God. If a prophet does not acknowledge Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist. You have heard that he is going to come into the world, and he is already here. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won your fight with these false prophets, because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. These people belong to this world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint, and the world listens to them. But we belong to God. That is why those who know God listen to us. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us. And his love has been brought to full expression through us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who proclaim that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in him. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we are like Christ here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of judgment. And this shows that his love has not been perfected in us. We love each other as a result. I truly do hope this video helps you. Please, please like, share, subscribe, and let me know if it does in, in the comments below.